Well, welcome to another edition of Beyond the Sermon, and uh, we're, we're doing Advent edition with our Christmas series that we just started, and uh, this is Josh Kelly, he's been a part of the church now for a couple years, and uh, he and his family have just been invested in, in serving and in supporting the church, and uh, Josh uh, has a love for digging deeper into sermons, and we knew this would be right up your alley as well to uh, engage in some of these questions and uh, and, and just, again, we're trying to get more and more out of the, the messages because we know Sunday morning or, or whenever you watch it can't always answer every question that you've got. And so submit those questions uh, however you do so in YouTube, in the chat, send us an email, whatever it is, uh, and, and we can dig a little deeper into this and engage together. So uh, as, as we look at this, we've just kicked off our Christmas series. Josh, you want to give us a quick recap on what we learned? Yeah, so it's going to be four, four weeks talking about Mary, a very Mary, M-A-R-Y. Yes. Uh, Christmas and really focusing on Mary, the mother of Christ. And uh, this week you talked about uh, how Mary was highly favored of God. The angel came and said that. And so you basically made a pretty audacious statement that we are just as highly favored as Mary. Um, that's kind of hard to believe. I mean, how, how can yeah. we believe that? What, what, how do we know that she wasn't more favored? And why, why should we think that we're on that same level as she is? Yeah, I, I think one of the things uh, to, to notice is that Luke doesn't specify any, any, any resume, any training, any yeah. deserving point of that grace to be bestowed upon her. Uh, there's nothing in, in the statement that the angel makes. Luke doesn't record it. He just simply goes right into the instruction that the angel gives, which is, you are highly favored. Yeah. And it is hard to believe, right? Uh, but I believe that it is for all of us. And, and, and to me, the, the two things that, that really cemented it was one, and we, we talked about it in the message, Jesus' uh, Jesus's words on the topic, that his mother is not more blessed than anyone else right, yeah. who would follow and believe. Secondly, what Paul writes in the Ephesians text, to say that the same word that's used for grace upon Mary is the same word used for grace to describe us as Christians. To me, that was the linchpin to say, that is the same grace. She doesn't get this mega supersized grace or this super duper spiritual grace or, you know, Virgin Mary grace. It, it's, we all get grace, but it is hard for us to believe. You're right. I mean, I, I think we're our worst critics. We're the hardest on ourselves. We look in the mirror and we see all of our imperfections and our blemishes. Uh, but it is important for us to, to recognize that it is the same grace upon Mary that is upon us. Well, and I mean, we may have different jobs, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously for her to what she, and I'm sure you're probably going to talk more about this, uh, but the ch willingness to do what, what God called her to do, obviously that took a lot of guts, Yeah. but the love and the fact that she, her, the grace is the same for you, for me. Yeah. Cause I mean, just as me, making me think, you know, you said, you know, Mary, in our, so our mindset, like Mary has this level of grace average Joe Christian this, and then we have all these great, you know, levels in between you. You're a pastor. So yeah. I know that puts you half, uh, maybe I, I, am I more highly favored because yeah, I'm yeah, a pastor? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like a, a step above me. Right. I mean, and that's no. the mindset, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I see where people can, can see it that way. Right. And, and that's the thing that I hope that we cement through this message is that the grace that God shows is the same for all of us because we are all his children, yeah. all dearly loved. And Jesus died on the cross for all of us, regardless of whether we were the Virgin Mary or a pastor or a missionary in Uganda, right. or you're a barista at Starbucks. Like there's no hierarchy in God's eyes in that way, but we do have different roles or different right. responsibilities or different steps of obedience that he's asking us or, or calling us to. But it all starts with that same call and identification. You are my child. Yeah. I love you. This is yeah. who you are. And I think that to me, that's what's most important starting with Mary's life. He didn't start with, this is what you're going to do. He started with, this is who you are. Gotcha. And that's huge. And when you have the idea of grace, you know, favor, that also implies that she's going to need the strength from God mm -hmm. to do what she's going to do. Yeah. And we're going to need that same strength, whatever it is. Yeah. It's a, a lie of the enemy, I think, that ranks Christians as more and less special. Yeah. What do you think that lie, like how does it hurt us in everyday walk as Christians to believe this lie that other Christians are more special? Yeah, I think what happens is we begin to diminish who God's created us to be. Okay. And I think that's why this is so hard for people to hear is 
wait a second, I am, I am loved by God in that way. I am favored by God in that way. It, it is so easy for me to look around the room and say, well, I could see he would do it for that person or I'd see he'd do it for that lady over there. But for me, no. Yeah. Uh, and, and it is really hard for us to accept that and believe that. And I, I think it's because we're our harshest critics. We know our sin. We know our, our flaws, our brokenness and, and everything. But we, um, if, we, if we can't grasp that, if we can't believe that, we will begin to, to deconstruct what God's trying to build. Gotcha. So, so it's not humility to say that I'm a, I have less grace given to me than another Christian, is it? It's, it's, that's not humility. That's something else. Yeah. <laughs> that's self-deprecating. That's uh, maybe even a, I don't know, would you call that a false humility to say, oh, no, 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 I'm not that special. I'm just right. whatever. I'm, you know, and, and we diminish who God has called us to be. And if we diminish who God's called us to be, we're diminishing God. Yeah. You know? Yeah. If we're saying I'm, I'm not that great of a, I'm not that great. Yeah. Then we're saying God has somehow failed me that God is less than, you know? Yeah. It would be the same as if you, you know, you, you saw your spouse before a date night. You said, Oh honey, you look beautiful. Right. And she just said, no, that's not true. Get out of here. That's not, a, you know, and, and, and then you're standing there like, well, I'm not lying to you. I am telling you the truth. You look beautiful, yeah. right? And, and to not buy into that is either to devalue yourself right. or to outright say what I'm saying is not true. Hmm. That I am lying about right. who I say you, who you are, how beautiful you are, what I, how I believe in you and love you and care for you. And, and, and so you're, in essence, when you're not believing that you're highly favored by God, well, you're diminishing who you are yeah. and, and self-deprecating, but also, uh, are we calling God a liar? Yeah. I'm highly favored? Yeah, whatever, God. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> you know? well, that, that, that's a good way of putting it. You know, you're, you're, you're thumbing our nose up at God saying, or whatever it is, like, yeah, yeah I, no, I don't, I don't trust you. I don't believe you. Yeah. Uh, and to me, it almost seems like it can be a cop-out. A cop-out? Yeah, because okay. if Mary can do that stuff, but I can't. And it's when you said this thing about um, that whole part where someone says uh, to Jesus, blessed is she who gave you birth. Mm -hmm. And he said, blessed rather uh, the one who does my will. Is that something like that? I can't remember yeah. the exact. Yeah. And at first when you hear that, it sounds like, like Jesus is like, whatever, you know, poo-pooing his mom. But that's not his point. I think that person who said, blessed is your mother, it was kind of like trying to dodge what Jesus, what Jesus was saying, dodge his requirements. Yeah, and I think that's why Jesus then puts the ownership on everyone else to say, no, you need to see yourself this way. Yeah. And everyone is open to this invitation hmm. that, man, will you hear my call? Will you hear my voice to say, you are highly favored and will you come follow me in that, yeah. right? Will you hear and obey? Will you hear and respond? Will you do that? And, and yeah, you're right. As we said, Jesus is not diminishing his mom. He is just simply saying, this is for everyone. Yeah. The grace that I am showing is for everyone. And we have to start there. Yeah. Uh, to me, like, that is fundamental. We all want to get ahead and get into the doing and get into the yeah. going and get into accomplishing and titles and roles. And, and, and so the word calling, I think, has become convoluted in Christian circles is that it is often associated with you know, being a pastor, I'm called to a pastoral right, ministry, right. I'm called to the mission field, or I'm called to, you know, whatever, you fill in the blank, it's all about what we do. And I think part of this calling that has been kind of an aha for me is that part of that calling is calling you into a new identity, yeah. calling you into his grace. And it's from that, that we then obey, that we then do, that we then get into all of what we're going to talk about in the coming weeks with Mary of taking on that risk and sure. believing in the impossible and, and, and stepping into that truth. And that's something you're saying when we were talking earlier that really hit me is this whole thing of, of being rather than doing, that that's been a huge thing for you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a doer. Uh, and so it is often, even in, in my role as a pastor, I will often think about what I'm doing and, and the programs or ministries and things that we do right. rather than just being with God and being um being a, a being somebody who's present with people yeah you know and and often it's what can i do what can i do what can i do and i think in and, and this is something a lot of people can relate to because we are um in a season where we can't always do what we're used to for me you're talking about the season of course we're talking about covid 
And, uh, you know, for you as a pastor, you know, obviously Sunday mornings, you haven't had that or, I mean, you've made it work, but initially right. there is like this huge thing of, I can only guess that for you, there's a lot of who am I mm-hmm. with all is taken away. And I'm t- making that guess based on my own life where, you know, I was in the service industry mm. and March 23rd or whatever it is, my wife and I got a little getaway from, we got, someone gave us these tickets to get on the Victoria Clipper. And so we went up to Victoria, spend the weekend up there. We're coming back down, you know, we come back down to Seattle and we're, we're in the car driving back home from Seattle and we hear Inslee shut down all restaurants. Yeah. Uh, there goes my job. Mm. And, um, I, and I have, you know, these other projects I'm, I'm writing, I do some other stuff and, um, that wasn't going as well as I wanted to. And I, that next day, that Monday, finding myself without a job, without any doing, without any purpose, yeah. it was brutal. I mean, emotionally, I was a wreck. I, I just, I didn't know what to do because I didn't have anything to do. And in this season, um, I've really, I'm learning to embrace that I'm a child of God first and foremost. Hmm. That what I how I succeed, that what I do, what I accomplish is not number one, and that's been a very hard lesson for me. Yeah. And so it's like something's shifting in me, and it's interesting that it took a, a pandemic <laughs> to do that. I really wish it didn't take anything that yeah. extreme. Our world is built so much on hierarchies and tasks and production, and right out of the gate of Mary's story, the angel just says, "This is who you are." Yeah. And I think right out of the gate this Christmas season, we need to be reminded this is who we are. Yeah. We're favored by God. We are shown the grace of God. Now be that. Yeah. Don't always have to go do something. Yeah. And, and I think that, that that answers a question that some may be wrestling with in this season is, you know, how do we do Christmas in light of COVID? Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. We got these Advent books and we've got Advent candles and kids crafts and all these stuff that we put together. We've got Christmas lights and trees and presents and things like that. And everybody's got their Christmas traditions and we're all wondering, well, how do we do Christmas in COVID, right? right? We just tried to get through Thanksgiving and, and that was different for everybody. And so I think we're all kind of on edge, just like, well, how are we gonna do Christmas? How do we live this out? How do we you know, manifest our traditions in the same way? And, and I think, this week for me, as I'm, I'm looking at Mary's story, it's just a reminder, um, it's not about what we do to celebrate Christmas. Yeah. It's what Christmas reminds us of who we are. Yeah, and it's not what we do, it's what God did. Mm-hmm. You know, he's the one, it's his doing, Christmas is his doing, yeah. it's our being, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I like you're saying that, that COVID might be a chance for us to kind of remember that, to be this yeah. Christmas instead of just worry about doing. Well, awesome. This has been good to be together, Josh. Thanks for jumping in and doing this. And uh, we're excited to spend the Christmas season with you in the Beyond the Sermon. And uh, please don't hesitate to send your questions throughout this series over the next few weeks as we look at Mary's life. Send those questions because we want to we wanna engage. We want to in, uh, interact with, with what you're thinking, pondering, and reflecting on during this Christmas season. All right, church? We love you.